Hey guys, Rob here with 3D Printscape. Today I'm going to show you how to properly set your Z offset when you're using a BL Touch unit. Uh, I had some issues with this initially, I uh, kind of went based on the recommendations in the guide. It wasn't right based on my extruder, and then I also had to adjust it adjusted a couple times because my extruder here wasn't completely uh, stable. Uh, so I had to make those adjustments. So I'm going to show you how to make those adjustments, make sure you're stable, and then go through actually getting the offset and setting it to make sure that you're good going forward. Now I'm using an Ender 3 here, um, but keep in mind that this will work for any of the Creality printers that you're using the BL Touch unit on. All right, so before we go and get started, make sure you guys hit that like button and subscribe. It'll really help us out. And also, this should be a shorter video. Um, I'm just to try to get to the point, kind of cover the key things to look at. All right, guys, so the first thing I wanted to point out here is you want to make sure that you have your extruder stable. If it's not, if it's shifting around, like if you go and do this, you're going to have issues. I had mine a little bit loose from the last time I took it apart, and I had some random issues after I did a couple prints where it got bumped, and it kind of changed the offset a bit, so it made it go a little bit higher than where it was. So what you want to do to fix that is if it is loose, um, at the back of the extruder here, you have a bolt. I'm trying to get a better angle, um, but it's at the bottom here, so it's kind of difficult to see. Uh, but you would just use your wrench that came with the printer and actually just tighten that. That will uh, bring it in tight. So what I had was it was just a little bit wobbly going uh, back and forth this way. It was stable on the axis. Um, so tightening these up here did no good. Uh, so just keep that in mind. But you just want to make sure that when you're done, it's nice and firm and that it slides back and forth without any issues. Um, if you don't do this, you're going to end up having issues and a bunch of failed prints because your offset will change. Trust me, I know. <laughs> Alright, so let's go ahead and take a look here. Let's go ahead and power up. We'll just walk through the process real quick. You're going to need the same thing you need when you're leveling um, manually, um, just a piece of paper or cardstock. I prefer to use cardstock. I know technically some people say it's a little bit too high uh, or too thick, but if you actually just go a little bit lower so you get a little bit of resistance, uh, that works out good for me. All right, so first thing you want to do is just go ahead and go to Auto Home. So go to Prepare and Auto Home. So that's going to uh, home it into the center, which is where the BL Touch unit sets the home at. So it's going to give us a second to do its thing. Now I covered setting up the BL Touch unit in a previous video. I'll link to that in the description below. Sorry, I wanted to wait for that to finish before I continue talking. I felt that I didn't cover this well enough. I kind of just went based on the offset it said and then made a note to just make adjustments if needed. Um, so the rest of the install process I covered in uh, good detail. I just felt that I could improve on this a little bit. So here we are. All right, so now that you are at the auto home position, you want to go ahead and adjust the Z axis so that you're completely level or flush with your paper. So as you can see right now, it just slides straight through. So we want to go and go to, oops, sorry, uh, prepare, and then move access and go to move Z. And then we're going to want to do 0.1 millimeter increments. Uh, right now, uh, just with the auto home, it sets it to positive five. Um, I know that I'm going to be neg around negative three, so I'm just going to just start lowering it until I get to zero and then make some adjustments from there. But as see at zero, you can still slide the paper under. You have a lot of opening there. Um, so let's go ahead and start lowering it to actually make the adjustments. All right, so let's just go to negative one five. I'm just sliding the paper under a little bit till I start to feel some resistance and then I'll slow down. All right, so I'm starting to get some resistance here. It's barely touching. 
but with the cardstock, I want it to kind of scrape a tad bit. So here, it's going through, it's scraping. I got the resistance I'm looking for. So this is at negative 3.3. So I can back it off one if I want it to be a little bit looser. Uh, so it's really gonna be a judgment call there uh, based on the paper you're using. But with this being cardstock, I'd like some resistance, just not too much. Going back to 3.3 here, I think that might have been slightly too much. Um, eh. This seems okay. So I'm gonna stick with negative 3.3. So now that we know what our value is, we can go ahead and set that. So we wanna go back to the main screen here. Um, go up to pair, uh, uh, so we're back at our main info screen. Uh, before we go ahead and set the Z offset, um, let's go ahead and raise the actual Z axis so that we don't have any type of scraping or anything like that. So let's just go ahead and raise this back up to zero. Um, so go back to move. And sorry, I should have had you do this before we left this screen, but it slipped my mind. All right, so it doesn't really matter what we go to here. Just want to make sure that when we're going down the three, that it's not actually going to uh, scrape at all. All right, so now we want to go, we're back at our main screen here. We want to go down to control and then motion and our Z offset. Now we're going to want to go down to negative 3.3 which is what we chose there so these are going down in a much smaller increment but once we get there we'll be good and actually I'm gonna go negative two, 275 or 25 first uh, because it was a little loose at 3.2 and a little tight at 3 so I'm kinda of splitting the difference and see if that works out I can always readjust it from there if needed. But once we have that set, you wanna go back to control and then go down to store settings. Now this part's important. If you don't go to store settings and hit that, when you power that off, your Z axis is going to be uh, completely ruined. So it's gonna set it back to zero. So everything you just did, you'll have to redo. All right, so now let's go ahead and kick off a print and make sure that it works. I'm gonna speed up the video here really quick uh, so you don't have to wait for the printer to heat up, but just print from SC. I don't really care what I print here, but let's go ahead and kick that off. And uh, let's make sure that we're good. And then uh, we'll go ahead and finish the video up. If you have any questions, go ahead and leave a comment below. And if you haven't already, make sure you hit that like button and subscribe. Thanks. All right, guys. So it looks like our settings here are good. Uh, if you did need to make any adjustments, you can. Let's say it was slightly too high or too low, you can just go into control, uh, go down to motion again, go to your Z offset and make slight adjustments either way. Let's say if I wanted to actually change it back to the 330, sorry, at 3.30 uh, that we were originally looking at, I would just go to make that adjustment, uh, make sure it's not affecting the print, which it looks like it did, uh, might have been too low. So just go to raise it back up. Um, as you can see, it kind of knocked the back off here. So I'm just pull this out, make sure we're getting good adhesion. Uh, but the main thing to look for at this point is that if you zoom in or if you get really close to the uh, extruder, that you're seeing it lay down a nice smooth layer and that that layer is adhering to uh, the actual bed. If you're seeing a gap that's too high and it's kind of stringing and it's not sticking, you're gonna to need to lower it. If you're actually scraping it and knocking it around, uh, you're gonna to need to raise it a little bit. So we'll just, let's say we made the adjustment, then we'll go back to control, and then you have store settings again, and then it's good for future use. So, I mean, at this point, uh, this is good to go. Uh, I'm happy with the results, so I think we can go ahead and call this complete. If you have any questions on the process, like I said, uh, go ahead and leave a comment below, and I'll try to help you out. Thanks. All right, guys, so that covers setting your Z-Probe offset. Uh, like you see, the process isn't difficult. You just want to make sure that you have your extruder stable and that when you bump it or anything, that it doesn't just move around on you. And make sure you save those settings so that anytime you power off your printer or lose power, you don't have to reset those again. If you have any questions, go ahead and leave a comment below. I'll try to get back to you as soon as I can. Thanks.